Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Animations Essential series. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at transitional rules, what they're used for and some of the common blueprints that you're going to use within these to control the flow of our animation states. Now for those of you that don't know what a transitional rule is, a transitional rule is going to allow us to control our animation blueprint and tell the engine which state the skeletal mesh should be in. So for example, you can see here I've created a proning state and I've also created a walking and running state. However, as of right now the engine does not know when it should be in each of these different states. Now in the last video we've got some information for the direction, the speed, and we've also got a proning variable. And that is all it is at the moment, it's just information. So what we need to do is go into these transitional rules and tell the engine to go into the different states depending on sort of where that value, uh, where those variables are. So for example, I've got a proning variable with this transitional rule going from walking and running to prone. I need to tell it to go into that transition if proning is true, and this is all done within this transitional rule. So with these transitional rules, you've got these little lines next to them, uh, these little lines next to them. And essentially what these are doing is telling the engine where the animation blueprint can go from one state to another, and you'll notice you've got the little arrow at the end. What I've set up here already is saying to the engine that we can go from the walking and running state to prone, hence the little arrow there, and then it can also go back again. And each one of these lines have got that transitional rule, and I need to set it up for each of these. So let's start off by controlling the prone for this animation blueprint. So the prone, if you don't know what it looks like, it is simply just a little proning animation, so you're down on the floor just like this. So to tell it to go into the proning animation, I've got to open up the transitional rule, which is the little pin on the left here next to the arrow going up. And then what you're gonna get is this little result node. And essentially what's gonna happen is, if whatever you hook up into here is true, then it's gonna go into that transition. It's gonna go from the first state to the second one. So it's gonna go from walking and running to prone. Now what you could do with this is simply get your proning variable and then just hook this up into can enter transition. And then if you compile this, it's going to work. And essentially what it's gonna do now then is if proning is true, so read the value of the variable proning, and if that's true, it's going to go into that transition. So one way you can see this is using the anim preview editor. So if you select your proning, in the bottom right here, your little variable for that, you can see what's gonna happen if proning is true. Now bear in mind, it's not going back once proning is not true, and that's where we need to set up the transition going from prone back to walking and running. So just go ahead and open this up. Once again, we are going to be getting the proning value, and then this time we essentially need to reverse this. So we need to make it return true if proning is not true. And the way that we're gonna do this is by simply typing in not. And we are gonna use the not boolean and hook it up here. So now it's gonna return true if proning is, you know, not true. So if we go back to our state machine, click to go into proning, actually we should probably compile first otherwise it wouldn't work. So hit proning and it goes down into prone uncheck it and it goes back to normal. And you can see it's switching between the different states as we go through here. And this anim preview editor is one way we can very quickly preview exactly what things are gonna look like. So I could even go and turn my speed up and make my character run so I can see how that looks. I can even chuck it into proning so it can't sort of do that. Um, there is loads and loads of different things that you can do and it's all gonna be depending on your animation blueprint and the different actions that you want to do. Now what I have shown you is the easiest way of telling it to go between one state to another and that is simply by using a boolean value which is true or false. 
Now what I'm going to do is take a moment to show you some of the other different types of conditioning that you could do to sort of switch between the different states. Now if you wanted to have something where you need two different variables to return true, you could use the end boolean which looks a bit like this. So if you want proning to be true, you would hook that up into A and you also need the speed to be below zero, you could also do that. So what you could do is use some of the float values and check to see whether or not the float is less than um, and just chuck it in like here. So if you want it to prone only if the speed is less than say five, you would then hook it up like this. So essentially now what's gonna happen if you go ahead and turn the speed above five and try and prone, it's not gonna do it. Move it beneath five and you see it's gonna drop to the floor. So there is loads and loads of different ways that you can control these transitional rules. And once again, you've just gotta think about it logically, think about the different conditions and when you'd want to do it. But essentially you are gonna be using this blueprint conditioning to control all of this. And there is loads and loads of different nodes. The main ones that you're gonna use is sort of the, you know, just generally using a Boolean the not node, the and node, and you're also gonna be using some stuff with floats and integers and so on. And you can just see all of those by typing in, you know, float, and you can see things like pl uh, less than, more than, equal to. Um, you've also got the normal equal to stuff as well for the Boolean, but like I said, it's just gonna take time uh, to figure out all of those and how they work. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much everything for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Vertus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.